Honestly, it's, uh, it's enriched my life, and uh, wow, it's taken me around the world, it's brought me to Basingstoke twice. Unbelievable, I'm so grateful, happy to meet all the, all the fans in Basingstoke, you guys, oh really, it's a long day, you're hot, there's a lot of fans with fans. Uh, but thank you so much for sticking around. And just to, just to sort of uh, underscore what Paul said, the volunteers, can we hear for the volunteers who've just done such a bang up job. I just also want to thank Jane and her crew for, you know, doing, herding cats and doing, the, you're doing a great job while we're here. Thank you so much, Jane and, uh, and everybody and all the, the people at the back, the tech crew, come on, they're awesome. Everybody. And uh, yeah, you've made my job uh, just a treat. So, so without further ado, let's bring on the, uh, the original uh, show that you all fell in love with uh, for 10 seasons in a row. Please welcome uh, Brad Wright, Richard Dean Anderson, and Amanda Tapping. Take a seat, take a couple of Good seats. Good night, everyone. Uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to stay up on the stage with you. you love Please. Little mind. Little, little mind. Little mind. Little mind. Little little mind. Little mind. Come on, man. Mindage. All right. We would um, barely have made it through the gate if it weren't for. <laughs> so that I want to just say, I want to just say, I've never been on stage with uh, with uh, Brad, Amanda, and Richard at the same time, and uh, just want to thank you guys for uh, adding so much to my life. Taking me around the world. Amazing. Oh, oh Richard's yeah. found a dog if on the floor right. somewhere. Yes, by the way, Rick, if you do see another dog, remember that the people on stage are just watching you <laughs> playing with that dog. So I, for me, I remember uh, getting a call from my agent a long time ago and just saying, they're making uh, Stargate the series. Uh, go and audition for it. Don't fuck it up because it they may it may be it may be recurring, maybe a recurring role. And in Canada, for an actor, that means two episodes. <laughs> because that's what you put on your resume. You go, I showed up, and then I recurred. I occurred, then I recurred. Two episodes in a row. Uh, but ten years later, here we are, like an amazing Yay. show. Yay! Yay! Thanks to these incredible people. And that's all the time we have, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Thanks very much. So I just want to open it up now for all the questions you have for anybody on stage, uh, individual or cast. There's one right over there. Let's go. Where? Where are we? What are we doing? Do we have... Oh. Right there. Right there. Hi, guys. Hi. Um, going back to the last panel where we, we were talking about um, female actresses and... Curious, was it ever a consideration after season six finish, and then we got a season seven, and then we got a season eight, to when they were talking of who would be the fourth member of the new SG1 team, to, for example, get Jonas back and let Sam lead a troop of three guys instead of yeah. bringing in a new guy. Yeah, was there ever any consideration of having <laughs> Sam Carter lead her own team, SG1? Yay! Gary, what do you think? <laughs> I think there was. I was in on those meetings, but uh, I was constantly shut down. Just so you know, Amanda. I will tell you what, we did, we did some discussions, and, and uh, there were lots of discussions, but I wasn't running SG1 in seasons 9 and 10. Uh, that was Rob, so I'll blame him. <laughs> so now we know. Here. That's a good answer. Brad. Excellent question. Mo. Thank you. It means you noticed. All right. Do we have a great oh, question? Right there. I appreciate it. Hello, guys. Um, quick question for all four of you. Um, probably more Brad. Um, the scene I love best: a very short sequence of Jack and Teal'c fishing. <laughs> Who thought up the idea of there being no fish in the pond? Yeah. Yeah. 
Was that an ad lib, right? I don't recall, actually. I wish I did so I could be funny right now. <laughs> but I don't. I think it was a line of dialogue that I put in 2010, where he says, where I can retire to a nice house with a pond with no fish. And I think that's where it came from. I think. Good, good to know. It's one and of I the... may have just made that up too. Yeah. So, but I that's what a, I do. a very quick one to win. Uh, the great late Don S. Davis, what was it like working with him? Uh, Don was, <laughs> oh my God, how do you describe Don? He would describe himself as 200 pounds of romp and stomp in Missouri. <laughs> Bull bit. Um, he was so gentle and he was so easy to make laugh. Like, I think some of our best games on set were trying to get Don to laugh. Because uh, he'd do it so easily and then he'd get all embarrassed. But he was, he was lovely and, and really strong and he was like a very protective of all of us. Especially Terrell and I. He was really very protective of us. Don's voice, too. I mean, come on. When we were casting, Jonathan and I said, we had just worked with Don in an Outer Limits episode. And we went, oh my God, that voice. He's, he just, it just says leader. And uh, so I think he was our only, our only choice, wasn't he? The, the what? I think Don was our only choice for general. Yeah, I don't think you went anywhere else. You couldn't, in retrospect. Uh, Don never knew how to uh, talk to me. <laughs> I, because I think at first, I, I would make him laugh. It was so easy to make laugh, as you said. And But after that, yeah. Um, but after a while, it, it got to be a little problematic in a funny way, because anything I said, he would wait for a, either a punchline or <laughs> the twist, and I might just be relaying a, a call time or something. Yeah, like I'd be doing that. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> but anyway, he, uh, he was... A great guy. He actually st uh, stood in and may have done some stunts for uh, MacGyver. Yeah. yeah. And uh, there was one shot where MacGyver goes out in the ocean into one of the bays in Vancouver, and um, and then the boat blows up. The little rowboat that he's rowing blows up, okay. and the dummy we used was so floppy and so skinny. Nobody bought it, because Don was a hefty guy, <laughs> strong, let's put it that way. Don, Don told me that he did 500 push-ups a day, that's what he told me. I haven't done that many in my life. <laughs> <laughs> a fun, I'll tell you something that you probably don't know about Don, that's not really SG related, but uh, I, you know, knowing a bunch of actors back in Vancouver, I knew people who were uh, students, drama students, out at the University of British Columbia, and they told me that Don, way back, was like a theater set carpenter. He worked out there at the university while they were all studying to be actors, and Don just kept falling into gigs, and he'd show up and he'd go, oh, I just got a commercial, and they'd go, Oh, really? Don? Oh, that's weird. Oh, nice. Good for you. And then he'd show up and go, oh, another commercial. And he just kept getting, and they were desperately trying to get work and, you know, thinking that they were going to be these, you know, incredibly dramatic actors. And then, and then one day he showed up and said, oh, I just got a job on a show in Twin Peaks. And they, they just about died. They couldn't believe that Don, who is this? The carpenter. Uh, the carpenter. The set carpenter was like getting all these gigs and then he got SG-1 and it was like, okay, well Don's, that's his journey, you know, but it was so funny to hear these actors <laughs> not expecting Don to do anything, and he did. He sure did, for a long time. Hi, Hi I'm here. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, you guys are so well loved. What is your funnest or funniest or weirdest fan experience you've ever had? 
So an experience with the fan, meeting someone that sticks in your mind. That's a dodgy question to ask at a convention. Uh, you know what, uh, let me, I'll start because it's easier for me because it was very recent. <laughs> I have, I have, and, I'll, and it's not specific to one person, but I have never sat down for two days and signed autographs. I, I didn't think anybody ever wanted the writer's autograph before. And it was so nice. And it wasn't weird at all, but it, I, I kept blushing. Because people, I blush at the drop of a hat. And, and, and I must have looked like Mr. Pink up there every time I was signing. It was, it was actually the most lovely thing, not, not the weirdest thing. But that's, that's my answer to that question. I've never had a bad experience. Is that the question? Uh, funniest or best fan experience? Or weirdest? I've never had a funnier... <laughs> you go first, I gotta think about it. Yeah, that's a really tough question to answer because we meet... We're fortunate that we get to travel the world on occasion and meet so many of you. And I don't know, I guess, you know, Funniest, there was a guy who was dressed up once as a Jaffa, but his costume started to fall apart. This was, I think, in Australia. And and he, then he dropped his staff weapon and then something, and I felt so bad for this guy, and I was stuck behind the table trying to <laughs> see the pieces, and then the, the coup de grace was that the tattoo just plopped onto the table. <laughs> so terrible for him. Bless him, wherever he is. I had a great one that was the weirdest experience I've ever had. It wasn't even, it was fan related. I was in the airport uh, at a gate waiting to board a plane in France and these uh, the two Air France workers who were behind the counter just kept looking over at me. And I just noticed, okay, they keep looking at me. All right, whatever. Then I went up and they said, are you Gary, are you Gary Jones? before I'd even given them my passport, and I said, uh, yeah, I am. Uh, and, they, and the woman then pulled out two eight by tens for me to sign. <laughs> she said, oh, we thought it was you. Would you sign these? But I thought accent. I was the only person who walked around with eight by tens of you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, there's two, there's two Air France workers. And then it got, and I said, and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to go with it. I'm not even going to, like, question it. And I went, yeah, sure, got a pen, signed it. Okay, thank you. And they go, oh, don't go, don't go. She hands me, a, like, a, like, a sticky uh, notepad. She goes, uh, would you mind drawing an elephant? <laughs> and again, I go, yeah, sure. Sure, as you do in France at an airport. I draw an elephant. And she goes, wow, that really looks like an elephant. It was surreal. And I said, yeah, because you asked me to draw an elephant. And I said, why? Okay, fine. Why am I drawing an elephant? And she said, well, one of the workers here uh, likes to collect uh, elephants drawn by <laughs> quote-unquote celebrities. And she's got a ton of them at home. And I didn't even know, I guess. I could only imagine that they knew I was coming through the airport or something. I don't know. But it was bizarre. Gary, were they, were they pictures of you? <laughs> just, just yeah, right. they were pictures of me. Yeah, yeah, they were pictures of me. Hi. Sorry. This is going to be a very, very silly question, so forgive about that, but I would really appreciate an answer. If there was an animated episode of Stargate with a crossover with Disney, <laughs> who would, which Disney characters would it be, and what do you think the story would be? <laughs> if there was a Stargate crossover with Disney, which Disney character would be in the story? You see, I'm a producer. I just know those You're two companies would never come together. <laughs> I'm going to say I would be Jiminy Cricket. Yeah, you would. Right? Totally Actually, I think technically we could use Mickey Mouse now legally. Yeah. Yeah, statute of limitations or whatever it's called. Is the question what? Which Disney character would each of us be? Oh no, which what, what would the crossover be? 
Yeah. Stargate Mickey! <laughs> wow, huh? Oh. Um, All I can think of is Dumbo, and I don't want to look at anyone when I say it. <laughs> in the in the cartoon in the animation, the cartoon of uh, Ben and Me. Remember Amos Mouse in Ben Franklin's hat, Tri Corner hat. I'd be him. I don't even think that was the question. But I'm so lost up here right now. Okay, we're gonna focus. Here we go. Next question. Next question. So sorry. Hi. Um, I've kind of got two questions. My first one is for Brad, but sort of a question. Can you please, please, please just do a round off of what happened to Stargate Universe so that we don't just end with that cliffhanger? I keep driving me insane. I, I want to know where they end up and if he defrosts the crew and if he lies okay. So. Well, here, here's, I don't want to give away the whole thing because A, we don't have the three and a half hours it would take me to walk it through it. Fair. But B, I don't remember the whole thing. I will say this. It had a lot to do with the original mission, to find that event that happened before the Big Bang. An right, event right. of an intelligence uh, prior to the possibility of that intelligence existing. And, and, and uh, it involved Rush um, being a big part of that. I see, now I wanna know. Please make it. <laughs> I, you know, if I could Creepy. just everyone, if I, yes. <laughs> if I could just make it, we would have done it. No, you're uh, fair. There's okay. so much, so just, much has to happen. It just had so much potential, and it was just so sad that it kind of got cut at that point. Like, and and like, it was genu genuinely because MGM went bankrupt, and that's the reason. Oh, well, how you, dare they? Yeah. <laughs> and sorry, my other quick question, I do apologize. Um, it was. For, for all of you, obviously in SG1, what was your personal favorite episode to make? What, what story did you enjoy the most or think was the, the best just for the script or? Um, was anybody here yesterday? Yes. yes. All right, same answer as that. Yes. Making out with that girl. And, you know, the story was good, too. <laughs> like, yeah, we wasn't there a few of them? There was a few. And the one I remember the most is when I, we did the episode Grace, where I'm, we talked about this yesterday also, so forgive me. Stuck alone on the ship, and then thoughts racing, and what do you really want with your life, says my dad, and this little girl running around, and then a scene with you, where we end up kissing, but at that point, something's blowing up behind us on the ship and so there's all these sparks and it's very you know dramatic suggestive the sparks flew when they kissed okay. so they kind of did as i recall see yeah. and and so mine, grace and she mine was work. mine was um heroes part one and two because yeah. Because I got to be uh, part of a, the archival video, you know, the videography, and uh, interviewed by Saul Rubinek, and it was just the best when I read the script, and it was just me, just going, he's going, okay, here we go, tell us about your job, and I say, well, I open the gate and I close the gate, and he goes, okay, and what else? And I go, nah, that's pretty much what you. <laughs> And to be able to say it like that was the great. Oh, and also I go, well, I saw Chevron one, Chevron two, and then I like to kind of shake it up at the end. I just like sounded like such an arse in that scene, but it was really, really fun to shoot. It was great to have, you know, to have the entire production take the piss out of my job. It was lovely. <laughs> Those were great episodes too, though. Heroes yeah, they one were and really two, great. like for yeah. all of us, were sort of quintessential. Yeah, super fun. Story episodes, like we lost. Yes. Janet. Go ahead. Okay. How did you interpret, how did you sign um, Gary's taking a piss on his... <laughs> very, very small. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Made my weekend. <laughs> 
It's duly noted. Hi, this is, oh, I know. Hi. Um, following on from yesterday and this morning, one, do they fit? <laughs> Your the underwear, right? you the can the underwear. I don't know yet. <laughs> and then the second part, following on from that conversation, what was the worst costume misadventure you experienced in the show? Well, the costume from Emancipation was just a misadventure from the start. <laughs> <laughs> the blue one with the chest. Yeah, a lot of boobage. And it was, and then there was a headdress with little things dangling, and I just, it was insane. Lovely. It was lovely. <laughs> did Brad write that? No, no Brad did not Brad write that. Brad did not write that. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan rewrote it. Yeah. Jonathan rewrote it. Uh, yeah, that, that was my worst costume misadventure, just. I've never felt more uncomfortable. No, that's not true. But that, that and the, when I went in Enemy Within, I think, when we start to go cuckoo, or Broken Divide, Broken Divide. That's another Jonathan one. When I clear. was, uh, I pull you into the locker room and start making out with I you. I told you. I know, but I tried on a tank top and shorts, and then when I, came to shoot the scene, the tank top was suddenly a lot shorter and the shorts were shorter, and I was like, what? Did I gain that much weight and get taller? What happened? <laughs> That's not what happened. But anyway, yeah, so I felt super self-conscious. Well, and happened? I didn't know you that well. Still, like, we were still getting to know each other. Well, we made up, <laughs> as you do. No, but why your your togs get smaller? Well, I Did think some... that might have had something to do with somebody in MGM or Again, something. Again, it was not me, I swear to God. <laughs> but you're involved. <laughs> yeah. No secret. Okay, so emancipation. <laughs> Amanda sees me and she tries to get me to help her because she recognizes that the outfit she's in, and, I, and I'm kind of frankly mortified that she's being put in this outfit, but she's also in heels. So I walk and she goes, what do you think of this dress, Brad? <laughs> and I say, well, um, I'm sorry, I just realized I'm just staring at your breasts. <laughs> and she said, well, they're at eye level. <laughs> true, it's true. Big heels, by the way, very big heels. Oh, I think I have the next one. Hi. Uh, so, Orizzi, you played these characters for so many years, and it's been off the air for, what, 15, 20 years now. Um, I think for all the fans, I, I know for myself, I watch it over and over again to this day, so to me, these characters are still so fresh and so now. So what are your relationships with these characters 15, 20 years on? Much the same. Yeah. Like, I still feel very close to Sam and very, I remember things about her that are, you know, really precise and for me, maybe not so much for Rick because he had done MacGyver, but for me, certainly, she changed my life completely. Well, this man changed my life, Brad Wright, but Sam Carter changed my life. So I, I feel very close to her, always, yeah. I, well, uh, I'll just throw this in. If um, if we could trans, if we could go back and no, stay the same um, time frame and pick up uh, the was it a trio or a quartet? Of, it was a quartet of um, Stargate personnel that traveled the gate and all that stuff. I would do it if we could play it as though we were this old. Well, this old. You're still young. Um, I would do that in a flash, and I don't think I've ever said that out loud to, to Brad. 
But now I'm saying, so you're you did say that out loud to me. What's that? You did say that out loud to me. I, I wrote scenes in the pilot that happened just before the pandemic and then it, it didn't happen. Um, I, I wrote General Carter. I wrote a... Was Jack O'Neill retired? Jack was re retired, but... Circumstances dictated that they, she said you might even get recalled in the, under these circumstances. And at one point, he said, I'd love to see you. I still have your toothbrush. I've only used it once. My teeth gone bad. I think that's all the time we have. It's looking like it says time. Oh, up. Stop it. Oh, you sorry. had to say something. Why? To what? We were going so we mediocrely. I know. <laughs> Can we go a little longer? I don't see minutes, any okay. blue shirts around. Hi, gu hi guys. Just a question for all of you. Um, with the beginning of any new series, I suppose there's always the risk to know, well, if they're going to last, basically, beyond the first few seasons. At what point did you sort of really kind of get the realization that it was going to last, that you're onto something really special as a, as a TV show? We knew, like, after the pilot that it was going to go two seasons, and then we, I think, no, we knew, we knew right away we had an episode, 44 episode order. Yeah. Oh, I guess Before I the end of season one, we knew we were doing five time. seasons. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I knew it was special and I had two completely different names and I was still in the show. <laughs> but, but I made a joke in, a, in an interview about, uh, I think we have enough stories for 10 seasons. And I said that in an interview in season two. And we went 10 seasons, but I was kidding. <laughs> I think after six, it was just like every year it was a gift. And then we kind of got a little like used to being told we were going another season. And then when Rob Cooper called us in to say, when we were starting season 10, that we weren't going to be coming back, this would be the last season. We were like, wait, what, yeah. what are you talking about? Man, we just keep getting picked up. But we're doing some movies. We said that. Yes. But we're and then we did those two movies and we hoped we were going to keep doing those movies. And then the bottom of the DVD market fell out, and that was that. question because we already answered. Uh, I was wondering, uh, so the topic of mental health in the fandom is starting to get really big. So I was wondering how you guys uh, deal with like anxiousness or stress or all that, all those kind of not really great emotions that you can sometimes get. You know, honestly, I, I, think it is, I think it's important to keep that conversation going uh, because there's a lot of stress in, in the work. And, and, uh, and I'm actually, Amanda's doing a book and, I'm, and I'm actually, I think I'm writing the forward for it. So it's a project I believe in. Hello. Uh, I would like to ask, what is your best memory of the late Cliff Simon? The best memory of the late Cliff Simon. Well, I I didn't know. I mean, I wasn't tight uh, w with him, but I was. Uh, well, I don't even know need be said we were kind of neighbors or at least he visited a, a beach around or near where i live and i w i had driven past uh where he had met his end um like about two hours after it had all happened and 
uh, there was still a lot of hubbub and stuff, and I, I asked um, one of the, I can't even tell the story. I mean, it was basically one of those revelations that someone you knew semi-intimately um, was just gone. And um, kind of uh, affected me. And again, I didn't know him very well. These folks knew him quite well. And um, I, I don't know what your reactions would have been, but spill yeah, the beans. Was, yeah, yeah, it was really shocking. But, you know, everyone kept saying, but he was doing something he loved. And I was like, yeah, but he's not here anymore. I mean, my memories of Cliff, he was so fun to shoot with. And of course, our characters had a very toxic relationship. But, and I got to punch him, which was fun. But, um, was hanging with him at conventions. And afterwards, when the actors would, you know, we'd go for dinner or something, and getting to talk to the man that he was. And he was so full of, like, he laughed really easily. And he was such a joy. And so my memories not, are not so much from on set, but just sitting and sharing a meal and laughing. Yeah, he was a lovely human. He really. was lovely, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We lost some good ones in the last few years. We lost Carmen and uh, Carmen Artenziano. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> I know you both said that you would go into the new Stargate if it, uh, Barmazad or MGM ever get around to doing it. If Sanctuary or MacGyver came to you as well and offered you the positions and you could only choose one or the other, which ones would you choose and why? I definitely do MacGyver. <laughs> What? <laughs> no, I, it, it, this is, maybe I'm just, I'm retired, but I kind of don't think I should be or, or want to be, really, because the thought of doing uh, MacGyver again as an old guy like this would be so much fun. I mean, think of the scenarios of trying to fix stuff and he can't keep his hands from Shakespeare or, or something he forgets and it's, I don't know, the possibilities are endless. Yep. I would MacGyver, how do, you do, how do you disassemble this bomb? I have no idea. <laughs> I can't remember. I don't know. I would do, I would do Sanctuary again in a heartbeat. Yeah, in a heartbeat. But then if Stargate came along. Hi. Yeah. Jerry. Would you do Stargate again if it came along? Or MacGyver or Sanctuary? Yeah, I would, for sure. <laughs> Hello. If you couldn't make up new names for your characters in Stargate, what would you call yourselves? New names, make up new names. New names for our characters? Characters, yeah. Ron. <laughs> Just Ron, though. You Just don't need Ron. a last name. No last, nothing. <laughs> Just Ron. With two N's. <laughs> you just say it a little longer. Ron. Yeah, you have to hang on to that second N. Ron. I think I just give myself the middle name Ray. You know what I mean? Walter Ray. Walter Ray Harriman. Good choice. <laughs> All I can think of are really goofy or slightly perverted names, and I'm so afraid to say any of them. Say it! <laughs> Go for it! Say it! <laughs> Daisy. Daisy. Daisy and Ron. <laughs> Go to the star. That's eh? a spinoff. Take it! Excuse me, I have a lot the of work Daisy to do. Daisy and Ron <laughs> show. Uh, 
or the rotten and daisy. No, it's better if it ends with Ron, so yeah. you hold the end. Because then you can hold the end longer. Daisy yeah. and Ron. Hey, time, time's up again. No, no. It's okay. It's no, look, we're getting more time on top. No, that's nice. nice. That's nice. Nice. We're going we're into the negative now. <laughs> oh. There you go, folks. Oh. It's been the cast of Stargate SG-1. Okay. Bringing it to a fabulous close. Let's hear it for them. Brad, Amanda, Richard Dean Anderson. Thank you all for coming. And Gary Jones. You're great. Thank you all for coming, Beijing Stoke 2024.